G. Intrigue and Mystery at Magical Dream Port On a foggy morning in London, at 221 B. Baker Street, Detective Sherlock Holmes and his faithful companion, Dr. Watson, receive a mysterious letter while having breakfast. Lord Carnarvon, sponsoring excavations in Egypt, informs Holmes of a highly significant discovery, which he believes is linked to a dangerous curse. Holmes and Watson decide to travel to Egypt to solve the case, Nefertiti's tomb, a papyrus scroll, and a curse. What dangers will Holmes and Watson encounter in this mysterious adventure? Is the curse real or just a deception? Subscribe and turn on notifications. It was a cold November morning. In 221B Baker Street, Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson were sitting at the breakfast table. Holmes was gazing out of the window while Watson was reading the newspaper. At that moment, a thick letter arrived on Watson's desk. The envelope was brown and torn, its ink faded. Watson picked up the letter and began examining where it came from. It's from Lord Carnarvon, Watson said the man sponsoring excavations in Egypt. Holmes took the letter from Watson's hand and began examining it carefully. The ink of the letter had smudged slightly, indicating it was hastily written. The seal on the back of the envelope bore Lord Carnarvon's family crest. What does it say? Watson asked. Holmes opened the letter and began to read. The content of the letter surprised Watson. Lord Carnarvon informed Holmes of a highly significant discovery which he believed was linked to a dangerous curse. In the letter, Carnarvon requested Holmes to come to Egypt and solve this mysterious case. Is he asking us to go to Egypt? Watson asked in astonishment. Yes, Holmes said. It seems Lord Carnarvon needs our assistance. Holmes reread the letter and noticed some details. Carnarvon hadn't specified exactly what his discovery was, only mentioning it as a lost manuscript. Additionally, he hadn't provided much information about the curse, only referring to a terrible death. This is very mysterious, Holmes said. Lord Carnarvon isn't telling us everything. Perhaps he's afraid, Watson suggested. Maybe he believes the curse is real. Holmes pondered Watson's words. He didn't believe in curses, but Lord Carnarvon's evident fear intrigued him. Anyway, Holmes said, rising to his feet, it's time to go to Egypt. Holmes informed Watson to prepare, as they would depart in a few days. Watson was surprised by Holmes' eagerness, but didn't object. He knew Holmes could never resist a mystery. After receiving the mysterious letter from Lord Carnarvon, Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson decided to travel to Egypt. Watson was surprised by Holmes's eagerness, but didn't object. He knew Holmes could never resist a mystery. They immediately began their preparations. Holmes delved into books to learn about Egyptian history and the lifestyles of the pharaohs. Meanwhile, Watson made travel arrangements and gathered the necessary tickets and documents. A few days later, Holmes and Watson leave 221B Baker Street. They take a train to Dover and then a ferry to Cairo. Despite the long and tiring journey, Holmes and Watson pass the time chatting and reading books. Several weeks later, Holmes and Watson arrive in Cairo. The weather is hot and dry. After passing through customs, they settle into a hotel and rest for a while. The next day, Holmes and Watson visit Lord Carnarvon's room. Carnarvon warmly welcomes them and thanks them for coming to Egypt. He is eager to show Holmes his discovery. Carnarvon takes Holmes and Watson to the excavation site in a hired carriage. The journey is long and dusty. Along the way, Carnarvon provides information about the history and culture of Egypt. Finally, they arrive at the excavation site. The area is bustling with archaeologists and workers, all looking excited and curious. Carnarvon leads Holmes around the site and shows him Nefertiti's tomb. The tomb is carved into the rocks and adorned with hieroglyphics. 
The entrance to the tomb is sealed with a large stone door. Carnarvon explains to Holmes how they opened the stone door and what they found inside the tomb. Inside the tomb, they discovered not only the mummy of Nefertiti, but also numerous valuable artifacts and artworks. Additionally, they found a papyrus scroll on the walls of the tomb containing the Nefertiti curse. Carnarvon shows the papyrus scroll to Holmes. The scroll contains a curse that promises a terrible death to anyone who disturbs Nefertiti's tomb. Holmes carefully examines the scroll. The writings on the papyrus are in ancient Egyptian, but Holmes can read the language. Holmes doesn't believe the writings on the scroll are a curse. He thinks it's just a superstition. As Holmes and Watson wander through Lord Carnarvon's excavation site, they sense a tense atmosphere. The archaeologists and workers appear uneasy and fearful. A few days prior, a worker from the excavation team was mysteriously murdered, causing alarm among everyone at the site. Holmes begins to investigate the murder. He examines the body of the deceased worker and searches for clues at the crime scene. Holmes doesn't believe the murder is linked to the curse of the tomb. He sees it as a homicide, with no reason for the killer to fear the curse. Holmes interrogates everyone at the excavation site. Carnarvon informs him that the murdered worker's name was Ahmed and that he had been a member of the excavation team for many years. Ahmed was known as a quiet and reserved man who never caused trouble. Holmes engages in conversations with the archaeologists and workers to learn about Ahmed's recent days. No one seems to have any information about Ahmed's death. During his investigation at the crime scene, Holmes discovers a fragment of papyrus. The papyrus fragment mentions the Nefertiti curse. Holmes believes this piece of papyrus may be connected to the murder. Holmes shows the fragment of papyrus to Carnarvon. Carnarvon suspects that the papyrus fragment was stolen from the tomb. Perhaps Ahmed was killed because he stole the papyrus. Holmes sets out to determine who might have stolen the papyrus. His initial suspects are the archaeologists involved with the tomb. Maybe one of them killed Ahmed to steal the papyrus and gain information about the curse. However, Holmes doesn't overlook other suspects. Perhaps Ahmed stumbled upon the papyrus accidentally and someone wanted to silence him. Holmes continues his investigation into the murder. He examines everything at the excavation site and follows every lead. Holmes is determined to solve this mystery and find out who the killer is. Sherlock Holmes continues to investigate the murder at the excavation site. He re-examines the body of the murdered worker, Ahmed, and reviews the clues at the crime scene. Holmes examines the cut marks on Ahmed's neck and tries to gather information about the type of cutting tool used. Holmes re-examines the fragment of papyrus found at the crime scene. He carefully reads the writings on it and realizes that the papyrus is a copy of the Nefertiti curse. Holmes believes that this papyrus is connected to the murder. Holmes interrogates everyone at the excavation site again. This time, the interrogations are more intense and detailed. Holmes tries to gather information about each suspect's background and possible motivations for the murder. Holmes questions Carnarvon as well. Carnarvon states that he knew Ahmed well and believed him to be an honest and reliable man. Carnarvon doesn't think Ahmed would steal the papyrus. Holmes interrogates the archaeologists. Each archaeologist claims to have no knowledge of the murder. However, Holmes suspects that the archaeologists are hiding something. Holmes finds a worker who witnessed the murder. The worker recalls that the murder occurred in the darkness of the evening. He couldn't see the killer clearly, but remembers a tall figure lurking in the shadows. Holmes carefully listens to the worker's account and takes note of his observations. The worker's testimony helps Holmes narrow down his list of suspects. Holmes discovers new evidence at the crime scene. This evidence could potentially reveal the identity of the killer. Holmes keeps this evidence to himself and doesn't show it to anyone. Using the new evidence, Holmes interrogates the suspects once again. 
one of the suspects appears nervous and gives contradictory statements while answering Holmes questions. Analyzing the behavior and statements of the suspects, Holmes deduces the identity of the killer. The killer turns out to be someone whom Holmes didn't initially suspect. Holmes explains who the killer is and why they committed the murder. The killer's motivation is a worldly one, such as money and ambition. They don't believe in the curse of the Nefertiti curse. Sherlock Holmes has solved the murder at the excavation site and identified the killer. The killer is Dr. Evelyn Radcliffe, one of the archaeologists. Radcliffe believed in the reality of the Nefertiti curse and murdered Ahmed to obtain the cursed papyrus. Holmes corners Radcliffe with the evidence, forcing Radcliffe to confess to the murder. Radcliffe admits that he planned to use the cursed papyrus to attain immortality and wealth. As Holmes listens to Radcliffe's confession, he ponders whether the curse is real. Radcliffe claims that he tried to awaken Nefertiti's spirit using the cursed papyrus. Holmes remains skeptical, considering the curse to be a superstition. However, that night, Holmes has a strange dream. In his dream, he sees Nefertiti and the cursed papyrus. Nefertiti tells Holmes that the curse is real and that Radcliffe's plans will succeed. Holmes wakes up from the dream feeling confused. He is unsure whether the curse is real or not. As Radcliffe attempts to flee before being arrested, Holmes and Watson try to stop him. Radcliffe draws a weapon, sparking a gunfight. Watson is injured in the shootout. Holmes subdues Radcliffe and takes Watson to the hospital. Watson's condition is not severe, but his recovery will take a few weeks. During Radcliffe's attempted escape, Holmes getting injured and Watson being shot are seen as signs of the curse. Holmes begins to believe that the curse is real and considers Radcliffe's plans still dangerous. Holmes retrieves the cursed papyrus and decides to thwart Radcliffe's plan to awaken Nefertiti's spirit. To prevent Radcliffe's plan, Holmes decides to go to Nefertiti's tomb. Holmes asks Lord Carnarvon for the keys and maps of the tomb. Although Carnarvon finds Holmes's plan dangerous and irrational, he agrees to assist him. Holmes, accompanied by Carnarvon and several archaeologists, sets out towards the entrance of the tomb. The journey is long and arduous. The extreme heat of the desert and sandstorms challenge them. Along the way, Holmes learns more about the tomb and the history of Nefertiti's curse. As Holmes and Carnarvon progress into the depths of the tomb, they encounter a strangely arranged series of hourglasses. The hourglasses are of different sizes and shapes, and some are broken. Holmes realizes that the hourglasses are not randomly placed and that they hold significance. Holmes carefully examines the hourglasses and understands that each hourglass represents a different time interval. The hourglasses indicate the timing of the rituals necessary to awaken Nefertiti's spirit. Holmes believes he can disrupt the ritual by turning the hourglasses in the correct sequence and thwart Radcliffe's plan. However, Holmes doesn't know the correct sequence for placing the hourglasses. He examines the hieroglyphs and wall paintings in the tomb for clues. Holmes notices that the hieroglyphs and paintings depict the story and life of Nefertiti. Using these clues, Holmes prepares a plan to place the hourglasses in the correct sequence. Holmes begins rearranging the hourglasses to implement his plan. Carnarvon assists Holmes by providing light in the darkness of the tomb. Suddenly, a sound emanates from the mechanism. As a warning not to tamper with the hourglasses, it releases poisonous gas. Holmes and Carnarvon must find an urgent solution to protect themselves from the poisonous gas. Holmes plans to use the ventilation system in the tomb to expel the gas. Carnarvon explores the tunnels and chambers of the tomb to assist Holmes. As Holmes races against time to find the ventilation system, the poisonous gas begins to spread inside the tomb. Holmes and Carnarvon start experiencing symptoms of poisoning, such as coughing and difficulty breathing. Holmes fails to find the ventilation system. 
The poisonous gas begins to suffocate them. As a last resort, Holmes hopes to complete the ritual by turning the hourglasses in the correct sequence and find a way to escape from the tomb. Holmes starts turning the hourglasses, and when the last hourglass is placed in the correct position, the doors of the tomb open, expelling the poisonous gas. Holmes and Carnivon manage to escape from the tomb. Holmes decides to destroy the cursed papyrus. He burns the papyrus deep inside the tomb, ensuring that the curse is forever eradicated. Triumph of truth, Sherlock Holmes has proven that Nefertiti's curse is nothing more than a superstition. With the power of logic and science, Holmes once again solves the mystery and brings justice. Final words. The adventure Sherlock Holmes experienced in Nefertiti's tomb is a testament to his courage, intelligence and logic. Holmes, in this adventure, has once again narrowly escaped death and achieved a significant victory in humanity's battle against dark forces.